drumlessonacademy.com. Take your drumming to the next level. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play a lick that I first heard Buddy Rich play that can be used as a stop or a setup for a push or a hit. And in the top tip, I'm going to answer a question posted by one of my subscribers about closing fills for songs. The lick I'm going to show you today is very versatile and can be used in a variety of different musical situations and or musical genres. I first heard Buddy Rich play this on an album with Lionel Hampton. Lionel Hampton was a vibes player and drummer and uh, Buddy Rich used this fill as like a closing fill to a song. So what, the way that he played it, he played the last note of the song that was a held note, so he played like a crash cymbal, went straight into a buzz or a classic buzz roll or press roll, and then played this pattern that I'm going to show you now as a button to the song and basically finishes the song. The pattern is basically a left lead six stroke roll with two additional notes and sounds a little bit like this. Okay, so to break this lick down for you, uh, the sticking is right, left, left, right, right, left, right, foot. So the first note is accented, that's on the snare. Accented note with the right hand, left, left, right, right, both of those on the snare, and then left hand on the first tom, right hand on the floor tom, and then one foot note on the bass drum. So played nice and slow, that looks like this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a groove and I'm going to use this pattern as a stop. So I'm going to start the, the lick on beat 4 and I'm going to finish on beat 1. As if we were playing a tune and we had to do a dead stop on beat 1. So I'm going to play two bars of time and at the end of the second bar on beat 4, starting on beat 4, I'm going to play this lick and finish on beat 1. I'm going to play that through a couple of times, so that sounds like this. Now I'm going to use the same lick, this time to set up a push or a hit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play two bars of time and at the end of the second bar I'm going to play a push or a hit on four and, the second eighth note of beat four. What I'm going to do is start the lick on beat three. It will finish on beat four with its bass drum note. And then I'm going to play a crash cymbal and the bass drum for the push on four and and that sounds a little bit like this It's time for Darren's Top Tip. In this episode of the Top Tip, I'm going to answer a question posted by one of my subscribers. And I'll read his email for you. Um, this comes from Martin, and Martin writes, I wondered if you consider covering phrases that you can use 
as final drum fills, or shredding at some point. It's certainly a subject that eludes me, and I usually end up shutting my eyes and hoping for the best. Thanks again, Martin. Okay, so not an uncommon question, that. Um, it's a little bit unclear as to where the problems, um, the problems Martin's having here, but it could be one of three areas, so I'm going to answer this in three sections. Okay, so the first point um, has to do with uh, energy. And um, the way that I usually describe this, if I take a particular type of music, and usually if we play something that's uh, particularly uh, frenetic, something that's usually is quite high energy, something like um, some fast rock or punk type of thing. Rock and roll is another good example. Um, well, for example, if we're having playing just a basic time flow, we have a lot of notes in the right hand, maybe eighth notes playing quite quickly. What can happen is by the time we get to the end of the tune, we may have started to experience some sort of cramping in the hands or in the forearms. And by the end of the tune, we're barely holding onto the sticks because um, in effect we are or can be experiencing some sort of overplaying. Now by this, I mean sometimes it's, it's good to think about your energy expenditure whilst you play. And something like a punk track, for example, um, where you're playing very fast or fairly quickly with one hand for a prolonged period of time can induce the, uh, the symptoms um, that I've just talked about. And this is due to the fact that when muscles are engaged in work, usually what happens as a byproduct of that work is that we have some kind of, um, just as like a car has exhaust waste, a muscle has waste in the form of lactic acid. Now, lactic acid buildup is the sort of thing that you feel if you go to the gym and you do any kind of weight training, uh, you'll feel after doing, uh, let's say, 10 lifts of a certain, 10 reps of a certain weight, you may start to experience this lactic acid buildup and it will prevent you from lifting more than, let's just say, 10 to 20 times. We experience that during uh, the act of playing the drums by playing something that's really quite quick and we're trying to engage the muscle very rapidly uh, in a kind of high stress environment and if we tend to overplay i.e. play too forcefully or too loud we can end up with this sensation of, of lactic acid buildup at the end of the song where like I said before we're barely holding on to the sticks a good way of kind of managing this is one to make sure that your technique is as efficient as possible you're not wasting any energy and number two would be to try and reduce some of the stress and, and one way that you can do that is limit the amount of energy you put into it. So a good way of doing that is if you think about your energy expenditure as being at rest 0% and whilst you're playing really hard is 100%, if you try to avoid getting into that top 5% that can sometimes help you. So or just to think about Re, you know, relaxing or reducing the amount of energy you put into something. Obviously, you've got to keep the time and the sound there, but sometimes reducing uh, the amount of energy you put into it by 5% won't really have very much uh, effect on the dynamic, i.e. how loud it will be. So that's one area that you can definitely um, start to think about, and it, it's just a form of pacing yourself over the period of, let's just say, a song or a rehearsal or a gig or whatever. So those type of things are worth uh, thinking about. It's just about how efficient and how efficient you are at expending the energy whilst you play. Okay, the second point has to do with vocabulary. Do you have enough vocabulary in your arsenal, your drumming arsenal, to actually play a closing fill? So, for example, you by the time you get to the end of the song, do you know what to do? Do you know what you're going to play? Um, a very easy fix for this, if it's a if it's a high volume type of thing where you hit the last chord with, on the crashes, bah, and then you've got to do some kind of drum fill. A very easy pattern to learn is a linear three pattern, which is the sticking is right left foot, as used by John Bonham et al. And loads of drummers use this pattern. I have coincidentally uh, just finished a uh, a lesson that's available in the store, which is all to do with is basically an introduction to linear drumming and it takes this linear three pan and shows you ways that you can move around the drums and you by using dynamics and subdivisions really start to get very creative with it so you might want to check out that there are loads of other patterns that you could 
you could play and it would take more than maybe 20 episodes or or even 100 episodes of this podcast to include them all. So um, there's one good example, it's a linear three pattern. Now the last part of my answer here is to do with listening. And it's always good as a musician to try and listen to as much music as possible because obviously the, the more input we get, the more kind of creative ideas it's likely to uh, likely to spurn. So one thing I would definitely suggest is one, as a general rule, listen to as much music as possible. And two, lis listen to as much different music as possible. And number three, listen to different drummers. Now, obviously, if you're after a certain amount of vocabulary to play a fill at the end of a song, if you just listen to one drummer, the chances are that you're not going to hear as much as if you listen to 20 drummers, for example. So listening has a large part to do with it. Not just that, but also it gives you um, different ideas about how to end songs. So if you're in a band where, let's just say you do a set of 10 songs and every song sounds the same, at the, all the endings are the same, you might want to just take a little... Uh, time to think about how you can kind of get a little bit more creative with the endings for tunes and one way of doing that is obviously to start listening to other artists and other drummers just to see what they do. Okay that concludes this episode of the top tip. I hope that's answered a few questions for some of you and thanks for Martin for sending that in. If you have a question you'd like answered then please feel free to drop me a comment at the website which you can do by visiting drumlessonacademy.com or you can send me an email and the email address is email at drumlessonacademy.com. OK, guys, thanks for joining me today at the Drum Lesson Academy. I hope you found the lesson useful. Don't forget you can get access to free bonus lessons by signing up to my email newsletter, which you can do by visiting the website. Also, if you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, or you'd like to subscribe to the free podcast in iTunes, you can do all this by visiting drumlessonacademy.com. My name's Darren Ashford. Until next time, have a good one. DrumLessonAcademy.com Take your drumming to the next level.